This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. And welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. As always, it is presented by Pilot Games. Make sure you play their products because when you play, your community wins. Uh, Hey, listen, a a lot can change over a week. We almost needed to record an emergency podcast because last Monday, uh, just seven days ago, we sat down, recorded a podcast, and it was about two hours later that we got the news there's going to be a coaching change. Yeah, practice was canceled. I was on the verge of sacrificing live chickens or I don't even know. Uh, we wanted a practice fight. You know, they canceled practice. And then now we're just in the Wild West, just having a – just doing a cattle ride up the standings. It's mm. been it's been wonderful. Yeah, they're rolling. Uh, you know, they, they lost seven in a row, then flip a switch, win three in a row – um, speaking of losing a lot in a row, Kinger, I see that you still have the mustache. Mm-hmm. November is over. Yep. This is called a victory lap because <laughs> I believe that, like Florida State and the college football uh, standings, I believe that my mustache was overlooked uh, and underappreciated. And so I'm keeping it a little bit longer just to let everyone know. I want you to have that awkward moment like, I want to walk by Jake Middleton and Bogosian on the ice and have them see me and go, you know what, maybe I got that wrong. You know, maybe I was too too close to the vest on that one. Yeah, so it's here. Plus, we're on a heater, and we're in the Wild West. It's kind of a cowboy mustache. I was going to wear a cowboy hat here today, but I couldn't find it in my house. But um, I, I, it felt appropriate until— Just to keep it. Yeah, until we run into some turbulence, hopefully not on this road trip— but we're staying west. It's a Wild West look. Let's stick with it. it to me, it's not. I mean, you, you maybe, like Florida State, you overlooked strength of schedule a little bit, right? And you, you walked in to November for the first time, and you thought you were going to come in here and, and all of a sudden just flip a switch, grow a little duster, a soul patch underneath, and then walk away a champion. It doesn't work that way. And... You know, some there's some of us that have years of November <laughs> under our belt, and I think that, right. that goes notice. And I know you're trying to catch up right now in terms of days with a duster. You've got a lot of work to do. Um, I heard in passing in the hallway some people say that maybe it's a little, a little, I don't know, desperate that you still have the mustache. Like you're still clinging to the hopes that you'll get some some attention from it. But we should actually see if you did find a way to, to come back, level the score. Uh, on the the dollar front, I don't I don't think either of us got anything. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know. I was gonna do something like give you a dollar, like you know when Jack Nicholas did the tie at the President's Cup, like a sportsmanship move. But no, I don't I don't know. I don't think we raised any money. I don't. But think we, so raised we, we, we raised awareness. We we raised awareness. What it's really about. We raised. And you're awareness. still you're still raising Men's health, awareness. Everyone. Men's health. You're still raising awareness. Middleton, uh, he, I think he crushed us in the actual fundraising campaign. Yeah, and he's, well, he should. I mean, he's a legend. Yeah. He's the best there is. Hey, what are your observations on this little heater? Um, they've all been kind of different, right? I, 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 I have some underappreciated things that we don't talk about that much. So watching Flurry play yesterday, the dude's an artist. I mean, just the way he moves – how happy he is. He's always smiling, you know, you know, it, it, it really is a special thing, you know, and I know we're getting to the end of his career, but going post to post, um, he's like, he is like a Charlie Chaplin or something. I mean, he's an artist. It's, it's really a treat when he's on, like you said, the yellow pillows, he's got the, the new kit and it's pretty awesome looking. Um, you just got to enjoy it. I mean, he's one of the all-time greats, and he really paints a picture in net. It is not robotic. It is not, um, you know, limited movement. 
I mean, it's a grease track, and it's it's fun to watch. The coaching change illustrates that it's a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately kind of business. But with Marc-Andre Fleury, you do have to, I think, look at it from a different lens from time to time. Not necessarily just what have you done for me lately, but, man, you've done a lot. And yeah. try to appreciate that because you, you are – so I'm not a stick collector either, really. It, there are guys that will want to collect sticks from. When you played, you never snagged like an Ovechkin or any of that. Right, no. There, I have a couple of guys that I played with or, or different things. It's a small little allotment of sticks. But Marc Andre Fleury, I start to get anxiety. Like, I should ask for one of those. Yeah. You know, like that's pretty special. You're, yeah. you're going to get one of the greatest goaltenders of all time. I've got Marty Brodeur's from when we played together. Marc Andre Fleury's, and all of a sudden I have a nice little stable of, of goalie memorabilia. Pick but, up a Patrick Waugh maybe at a card show, and then yeah. you got all top three. But with Fleury, you can appreciate more than just what have you done for me lately. You know, it's it's watch a style, watch a, an enjoyment and a love for the game, how the guy prepares. I mean, he, he probably puts more people in the stands for warm-ups than any other individual player um, ever. I mean, the fact that he wants to take – the breakaways, like the shootout moves at the end of warm up, <laughs> like that's it's well, he's just a, kind he's of fun, a, and they're just having fun. He's a rink rat, and I don't think you normally think of a goalie being a rink rat. I mean, he loves it. He loves the shootout. He he loves he just having fun. And I think Minnesota fans have adjusted. So we're uptight as a fan base, and he was stressful when he first came. It was like, I can't watch this. I, I, it was hard for me even. Like, this guy is all over. He's sliding all over. Uh, I know he's a great goalie, but it's it's harder to watch than the other guy who was more calm. But now I think now that he's been here a little bit, I think when he's in the net, people are just sort of like, okay, we're doing this. this let's they jumped on it. the roller coaster. They're along yeah, for the ride. Let's we'll see what and, happens. And, and he's been good. So, But, um, yeah, I, I just – that was one performance uh, – Kind of a Marco Rossi game against uh, Bedard, which was sort of, I kind of like that that plot line that no one's actually going to write about, <laughs> probably nationally, but just locally, it's kind of fun. I mean, he's a our guy's a top scorer, Rossi as a as a rookie and playing against the the superstar, and and really he's just been great. Uh, I I don't know what to say. I mean, he's he's been a really huge part of this team. Yeah, and I want to go back to goaltending though too, and. We should start on, and I think I could speak for a lot of people in the organization, thanking Dean Evison for his time here. He came in, changed a lot after Bruce Boudreau. The culture, they got that right. You know, the attitude, they got that right. The style of play, they got that right. Um, he changed a lot for the better, and, and the product that he is leaving, John Hines, is a much better one than he inherited. He raised expectations. He did. He's done and, a lot, and, and he's a he, good dude. Good. He, uh, you know, with the hand tied behind his back on the cap. Um, I mean, he really they over. Never a you could say once. they. You, you could never say heard they, him say that. Nope. And you could say they overachieved in a lot of ways. Right. I mean, um, yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, his record. A couple hundred point years. Um, his record looks awesome. It's the like, best I saw his winning percentage in franchise history. Like, it's it's high. Yeah. You could you could manipulate the stats, but he's like a top ten all time winning percentage coach. Uh, if you use like a certain baseline of games, there are coaches that went and play that coached like I don't know forty games that have a a really high winning record. But if you have I don't know the. 200 games coached or something at a minimum. He's like top 10, if not higher than that, in all-time win percentage. Um, so, but he was he was good to us, the the broadcasters. Yeah, always, you know, honest, truthful. Gave us time when I don't think he needed to. Uh, he he was terrific, and it's unfortunate. I don't think the players quit on him at all. But you also can't ignore the fact that things all of a sudden look different. And bringing this back to the goaltenders. The, it, it almost shines brightest right there. The the goalies all of a sudden are making saves, like Marc-Andre Fleury was making saves in the Chicago game that the goaltenders maybe weren't making earlier in the season. And, yeah, I mean, you have to look at the numbers that the goaltenders are, are putting up in the, the Heinz era, and, and they weren't doing this before. I think it's a 962 save percentage, something like that. They've only given up three goals on so 79 shots. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, I think 
the important one too is high danger. The the Wild are starting to find their identity too. When they're good, it's a goalie friendly system. So uh, you can put out Mark Andre Fleury, Phil Gustafson, and you don't have to ask them to be tremendous every single night. You just have to ask them to make a couple of big saves here and there when the guys in front break down or turn a puck over, and they're getting that now. I think. They're, they've given up somewhere in the neighborhood of the low 20s, high danger chances against, and the opposition's only scored on two of those. Heck, I mean, they've only scored three goals. Uh, so the goaltenders all of a sudden are making saves. Uh, the guys out in front of the goaltenders are playing better, too. I think the Wild got away with one Sunday, too. I mean, if Jared Spurgeon goes down, which... Oh, and I thought he was done, done. So yeah, so did I think everybody did. I mean, he basically did like the thumbs up getting carted off. I was like, that's he's done. That's it. Yeah, and then he was back. He got like his knee pinched against the wall, but it really looked bad. Yeah, that would have been. Did, not have you seen good. like that would have been like an explanation bad. of what it was? No, but because uh, I've had one. His I thought it was knee too. But I've also gone into the wall really hard with my heel before, where it absolutely like kills your foot. Your, like it's a dead foot. Yeah, your foot like is gone for a minute. Yeah, it, it did have that look. So right after it happened, they had the backwards angle, and he he kind of like collapsed. So I wonder if he just had like a dead leg. Those are, in man, I, I don't want to I don't want to say that Coach Hines isn't doing enough to deserve the the. The good play, and I don't want to say that Dean Evason necessarily does do all that, but Evason wasn't getting those breaks. Uh, like the Wild weren't getting those breaks down the stretch, and whether it's just a, a change in voice or uh, something different, they're catching breaks like that now too. Spurgeon was out to start the year, right, and all of a sudden now it looked like he's going to be done for the year, and he's back five minutes later. But they're getting their breaks, they're capitalizing on the scoring chances, they're getting their saves, and all of a sudden where it was, the Wild were look like a cellar dweller for who knows how long to now they're back in to relevancy. I mean, it's what do you notice? Uh, do you notice anything different from a coaching standpoint? Um, you've been doing all these games, I think. Do you see like little nuances? Yeah. Things that, what, what are a couple there's things a, you notice? There's a couple things that are different. And man, I have to give Heinz a lot of credit too. And I think you can tell that he's an experienced coach because he hasn't come into the group. And then just gone up to the whiteboard, erased everything, put his thoughts up there and said, this is how it's going to be done now. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done that. He's more just uh, – and I think Phil Jackson a little bit, when I think of what he's kind of doing, it's less like let's get onto the ice sheet and fix all of your guys' problems. More – tell me about your guys' problems and let's see if we can't work through it with words and read this book. I think he's, I th honestly think all it is is he's just propping these guys up and giving them a chance uh, to, to build themselves up, helping them, handing them a, a board here and there to build a foundation and, and get it going again. But there have been some minor tweaks and, and there are some things that are different, even in practice. Yeah. What have you noticed? So Heinz wants practices short, fast, hard and that's not much different than Dean Evison but what Hines will do is blow the whistle and stop a practice when it's not being done right he'll coach and pay real close attention to details so he'll want certain routes and now this part of this might be because it is a new group but he'll stop a, a drill mid drill and say this person has to be here and the difference will be two feet mm -hmm. and say this is the detail it needs to be here the second support needs to be here third guy needs to be there and then before you knew it and before the guys know it, all five guys know exactly where they need to be in different situations. And if it looks like they're playing faster on the ice, that's the difference is there are, it's not that he's changed the, the systems. The systems are more or less the same everywhere you go. It's a one, two, two, four check. It's a two, one, two, four check. It's the neutral zones are the same. Your breakouts are very similar. But what I think he's created are these rules within scenarios on the ice. So a quick regroup. So if the, if the opposition doesn't get a clean breakout and it's chipped out into the neutral zone, there's an emphasis on picking that puck up and going cross ice up to the forward. So that forward's got to get out of the zone fast, become an option, move up. And they might be able to go D to D and up, but everybody knows the routes and it's fast. It's not, let's 
sit back and read this play. It's I can count on my guys being there. So it doesn't matter if he's there yet or not. I'll start this play, and he'll be there by the time. It's almost like a quarterback throwing a football to a guy coming across the middle. Like, it's a timed play. They have these timed plays now, and they start to get these going over and over and over again, and the game starts to look faster. They start to play faster. Now you start to hem the opposition in a little bit. So that's happened in the neutral zone. In the breakouts, it's the same. I think they're overloading. They're making the passes a little bit shorter. There's more support. They're pulling guys across the ice too so to speak so like your third forward anybody that knows hockey knows that you always have your third forward high and his job is to not have the other team get above him mm -hmm. so you pull that guy out that's what they're doing they're, they're running a the guy across you pull that center out that opens up the layer underneath you're telling your d to get up boom he's up the ice now you have instead of your three forward options on your breakout you've you've got the the fourth option and the D-man coming up. And a lot of teams do that, but not a lot of teams pay attention to detail and really get after it and harp on it and, and practice it and go. I think that those couple of things have resulted in – you look and we pulled up a stat on the Bally broadcast yesterday. The Wild were averaging 3.98 odd man rushes per game the first well, – I don't, can't even remember. 19 games. Yeah, 18, 19 games. And in Nashville – they had 11 odd man rushes, and through two periods in Chicago game, they had seven on pace for 11 odd man rushes. So the quickness of play and their ability to move the puck in the neutral zone fast, creating quick little two-on-ones, has resulted in odd man rushes and hence scoring chances and more goals. So it is working. No, and I, the penalty kill seems to be the same diamond, right? It doesn't look like he changed that much, and it seems to be working. We won't, If we want, we can nerd out a little bit on the, the penalty kill. I think where the Wild were getting beat was that you get these power play quarterbacks middle top that are good, and if yep. they're the dual threat as a shooter, that, that would give the Wild a lot of trouble because the D would be trying to get in the shooting lane, the forward would try to be getting the shooting lane. They weren't closing things down well enough, and as they're – they're trying to help their teammates out, block a shot. They'd open up a lane and, and a seam the other direction, so it was a little too porous. They're trying to do too much. Now what they've almost done is said, all right, we're taking away your middle top option. We're going to run the diamond, and I'm just going to mirror that guy. You can try to beat me from the flanks. So now the guys on the flanks are the ones that are kind of running it. Teams have now spread their guys out on the goal line or a little bit lower because now the attack that you give up is like a goal line attack. Because it goes one, yeah. two, one. I've seen a lot of those sh shots right at the goalie from yeah. the side. So if you have the pause button, hit the pause button, you'll see it's a quick two on one at the net before the wild guys can recover. That's where the long body comes in. So it's the D man that's in front. His job, keep the puck on one half of the ice. That's why he lays down. So if somebody has the talent to sauce pass over, a, uh, you know, a, a long body, a long body, land on the backside to somebody on their tape, it'll go in the back of the net. It will. But it's a hard play. It's a really and hard a low play. percentage play. Low percentage. And no, it's going to give up. So that's kind of where they're at now. They've they've taken away middle top. They've done a pretty good job on the seams. They're giving up low attack two on ones, but the the long body right now is working. So that's the uh, play by play. Let's do a little color on these three games. So um, moments. Uh, the um, you had the the hat trick from Dewar. Uh, our guest today, by the way, um, you almost we were trending for a hat trick from Rossi as well, right? So we're getting scoring from kind of all over. My one of my favorite plays was uh, Faber no look weird to, Faber. to Freddie. That was a power play, and Freddie that he didn't even. It was like a one touch pass for the goal. Not that if he would have just sat there for one second and cradled it or pulled it back, it doesn't work. It was just awesome from the no look to Freddie to out front. And I guess Rossi scored the goal, I think, on that one. But um, <laughs> I love the uh, – I love that your favorite part is the favorite no look. <laughs> I, and it was kind of unnecessary too. It was like he just was like, oh, looked away. But uh, that maybe, was great. The, maybe he couldn't see without the glasses. I did, I, did, I did have a question for you though. So Felino gets in this fight in the Nashville game and – I don't – and there's a part of me that doesn't like when Moose fights because he's, like, our our toughest guy, right? I mean, I know Maroon's in there too, but, like – and the guy, he was a lefty, the guy he was fighting, and it was like he could never quite – he couldn't get a grip. You, you remember this fight? Yeah. I was just wondering what 
what happened there? Because he, um, first of all, we're winning three nothing, so it's kind of like, why are we fighting? And then, then he was almost like tucked in, and he couldn't ever get position. And I, it was, it made me very uncomfortable because it seemed like he lost the fight. But I don't even know if it really happened. It didn't really get going that much. But as a fighting, a guy who fought and fought Marcus, did that guy just have length on him and grabbed no. him and? What went down there? Because it was I don't like. There, there when, was like there was something that went on in in the front of the net. And I'm, no, I'm not saying why they fought, but like the fight itself, it seemed like he could never get free. And I didn't know. It, I've never really seen Marcus kind of um, if it was a draw or a loss. I mean, he, he usually always wins his fight. I give Marcus a lot of credit. So there's, you know, most of the teams and the personnel on every team. And every once in a while, there will be a call-up that will surprise you. But you yeah. look at the game notes, and you want to check their penalty minutes. If they have an odd number on there, you know they'll fight. Yep. So part of your job when you fight is knowing the other team. Check the game notes. Be prepared for anything that might occur. And Marcus Foligno and Luke Shen, they've been around a long time. So I don't think it was that big a surprise. But Marcus picked up on it right away. Uh, that Shen's a lefty. Marcus knew, and you have to know that yeah. stuff, otherwise you get caught. Well, you could guard. tell he was he was in defense mode from the start. So Marcus to went grab to, on. Marcus went to grab with his left hand because that's his non-throwing yep. hand. But he knew that Shen was going to be throwing lefts, and Shen's a lefty. So what Marcus did is he threw like the triangle up the blocker, uh, his right arm, and everything Shen hit through would hit him in the elbow pad or the glove or something on the outside and then it's just you just have to sit and wait for their artillery to slow down before you can kind of grab which is you can get caught which is scary when it's felino that's why i was and then it was the only time in the whole game brunette kind of smiled they just showed bruno on the bench and he was just like it was like his only he just kind of gave a little smile but yeah he had to take blows and we never got hit with anything no but it didn't look right i'm like oh my god i think they're going to beat up our so that's a, guy. I think that's what Shen did it was it looked good for him he didn't land anything Marcus never got a chance to get a hold they didn't it wasn't like a full square up and he had him in a spot takedown looks like the right play here they get the takedown everybody gets they both get their 5 minutes they go to the box they're good to go after that I think that's kind of how that went but uh, I thought Marcus played it pretty well. Like knowing that Shen's a lefty, like it could have started off much. That different. dude's a big, strong man yeah. as well. That yeah. Shen. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That and was fighting like fighting has changed. It was like two guys, guys fighting on the farm. That fight. It was like they were out by the post. Maybe they were replacing some post, and the two grown men getting in a fight. But it was it was it was a weird one for me to watch. I just wanted to ask you because it it didn't pass the eye test to me. It was like he couldn't. He was just kind of holding on, you know. I think that's what he was doing. He was just kind of holding on, waiting for his opportunity, but didn't quite get it. Yeah, he was buying time for sure until he could get something going. But speaking of the farm, those guys burn a lot of calories. If they uh, if they need something to eat, what should they probably go with? Well, I would go with some uh, Jimmy's salad dressings and dips, probably coleslaw. I think that's a great choice. Um, it's crunchy. It's cool. It's made in Minnesota by a family-run company. Put it on a burger. Hot dog next to the baked beans. Let's act like it's summer, even though it's not. Go check them out. Jimmy's salad dressings and dips. Don't sleep on the slaw. Don't Jimmy mess in with my dresser. Speaking of farms, um, I'd love to have a barn. And if I did have a barn, I'd want it to have a nice roof on top of it to store all my summer toys, the boats and yep. everything else. Uh, and if you do have a barn and there was some storm damage in your area and you're wondering if that roof will hold through the winter, you should have our friends at Wild Construction come take a look at it. Roofing season's kind of over, but you can jump on the schedule for next spring as soon as the snow clears. Uh, they'll jump right on your project. They can still do siding and windows. So if you have any of those exterior needs, any storm damage from last year, wildconstructionmn.com. They've got some great tools for you to research it, get an estimate, uh, and get a hold of them. Check them out. Well done. All right. Uh, I think it seems like a good time to bring in our guest, and he is. no one's been hotter uh, than Mr. Connor Dewar. Um, welcome to the pod. This is sponsored by Duke Cannon. Uh, hardworking products for hardworking dudes. And actually, you got kind of a headband situation here. On. You're a guy who knows about hair product and knows how to uh, to look good. So um, how's life? You, it, it, how how funny a week can change uh, everything. I mean, we were here last week. Uh, practice was canceled. We didn't know what was going on. And then we just kind of had a kind of a wild ride for the last week. 
Uh, yeah, it's first of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been kind of a complete whirlwind around here um, with the coaching change and then, you know, getting out of the slump and kind of everyone's heating up and scoring now and, you know, goalies are playing great, um, special teams are clicking and, yeah, just things are going well. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Now, uh, how are you with rejection? Because it uh, it's my understanding that we we actually had you lined up once before, and then we we pivoted, and that kind of stung you a little bit. Um, is that a true story? <laughs> that is a true story. Well, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> we yeah. gave you you were in the green room. He's, he, he I was ready, and then Wall said said no, I'm going. So I said okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that was his. Oh uh, man, yeah. Um, but no, we're, we're happy to have you. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, I want to, I want to take this back to where you're from. So how do we say it? La Pa? The Pa. The Pa. Yeah. Okay. So where, where is that? That's North, like, like 600 kilometers North of Winnipeg. Of Winnipeg. Yeah. So like the Arctic Circle. Um, I think Churchill's like another 12 hours North by train. So, so it's, no. it's about halfway <laughs> okay, to polar okay. bears. Yeah. To the polar bears. Yeah. Awesome. And what was hockey like? there growing up i mean you have one town rank uh yeah so the pots like the town is divided by a river and on one side is the reserve and then one side is the town so there's there's a rink on the reserve and there's one in town and then everybody plays hockey in town or is, is that like the thing to do uh yeah that's all there really is you know like baseball isn't organized soccer isn't organized um there'll be school sports and stuff but yeah it's it's pretty much predominantly hockey and how many people live in the town um I believe on the town side it's about five thousand, and on the reserve it's close to three thousand. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good sized town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How? Uh, what do you think would happen if you brought a bunch of people from the North Loop up to the Paw? How would they? <laughs> or the Paw to the North? Yeah, loop. yeah. What would what would, <laughs> what would be the more interesting scenario? Bringing you know a busload of people from the Paw down to the North Loop, or sending a bus of the North Loop people up to the Paw? Um, I think either way you went, it'd be pretty hostile. <laughs> <laughs> It would some, be definitely a feeling out process. Hey, should we warm him up? I yeah. Think, I think we got to do the, uh, we're going to do the rapid fire with you. So the way this works is just quick answers. If you if you don't have an answer, you can say pass. Okay. Um, the goalies, including Wallstead, who sounds like uh, bumped you at some point, yeah. they, they can be slow sometimes. When yeah, they, do they clearly don't have to make a lot of decisions because they, they, they struggle with them. Yeah, and I got to just find this thing. And, and uh, I think you want to go... Uh, back and forth carts. Yeah, that's, I'll, I'll I'll go with some of mine right now. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, what was your first concert? The Tragically Hip. Tragically Hip, yeah. nice. Uh, what? Well, yeah, producer loves that one. First job. Um, my buddy's dad owns an apiary, so I was scraping hives. No uh, way. Yeah. Fellow beekeeper. Yeah. Well, it was only like a one week stint here and there in summers, but oh, still, yeah. I love that. Yeah, shift work. Yeah, you have your own Netflix accounts, or you share your uh, your logins with anybody. Uh, I'm on my parents' account. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, That's great. Nickname: uh, Dewey, C Do, Con, Con Man. What do you listen to in the car? Um, probably like alternative rock, indie rock, rock. Every other cart. Go ahead. You can keep. Going. All right. Uh, it's your birthday. Where are you going to dinner? Where am I? Here. Here, um, probably Belly Sushi. I gotta go there. Uh, green light in any NHL city? Um, Vancouver. Good choice. Uh, hockey jersey you had as a kid? Uh, Saku Koivu. A pregame meal? Um, pasta. I tried pesto actually in Nashville for the first time ever, and then. <laughs> no, well, now you can't go back. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I guess, I, I I guess that's every game now. and that's the end of that. Yeah. And then there was pesto. Uh, go to drink at the bar. Um, Mick Golden. Perfect weekend. What are you doing? Mick Golden. I gotta ask him about that. Go ahead. Um, sorry. What was the question again? Perfect weekend. What are you doing? Uh, I'd be at the lake in the paw. Uh, hidden talent. I don't know. Um, gift card from any store. Mm. Golf Town. Uh, last thing you binged watched, like a show or a movie, something you kind of dove into. Mm. Gen Z, I think, 
or Gen X. I don't know. It's on Amazon. It's like the boys spinoff. Who plays you in the movie? What actor plays you? Uh, probably Christian Bale. Ah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. Too. that's nice. What's your favorite movie? Um, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. I've heard you're a Lord of the Rings guy. Yeah. You got a little Hobbit in you, or? Uh, <laughs> Do you have hairy, you got hairy feet? So. Do you, you have bit, hairy yeah. feet? Like a little flat? Yeah. Really? Flat footed. That's cool. Well, up north, we used to not wear shoes. We just walk around the woods barefoot. So that lets the hair grow. I can't yeah. tell. That's why the hobbits have the hair. Who does or not? Do you actually have hair on the top of your feet? Yeah, I do. That's awesome. My 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 daughter just gave me a pedicure, and she was floored that I have hair on my toes, turned it right off. So, you're not alone, buddy. So that's enough foot talk. <laughs> that is. I uh. So how about the change to pesto in Nashville? What was going on? Was it like uh? So, short? I mean, this is a huge deal. Um, I was looking at the Swedes because you might know the Swedes. They do like, uh, like meat sauce, red meat sauce, and uh, spaghetti with ketchup on it. Ketchup, yeah. So I was gonna, which is just nasty. I was gonna try that, just out of curiosity. I'm gonna try it, and then I was sitting next to Marco, and his pesto looked really good. So I said, I'm gonna try the pesto. And this is at the, like, they have a pasta bar, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So at, at the pregame meal, there's a pasta bar. There's basically a, a pasta chef behind a station, and you walk up and you get can whatever pick, you want. You can pick, like, your noodle, your stuff that goes in it, your sauce, your protein, and then they make it and serve it up to you. And so give us your order. Uh, that day, I got a spaghetti, shrimp, chicken, mushrooms, snap peas. Um, the dried tomato. And then you were like three goals, four points. <laughs> Almost four goals. Well, Come on, Bruno. Four, four goals. Four goals scored in an NHL game, but one disallowed. <laughs> true, yeah. true. Um, yeah, that, that is, that's your pregame meal from now on. I would, I yeah, would is that to... what you're going with next game? I don't know. I'm not really superstitious or like. It puts you in a tough spot. Yeah. Because you go back to it and you don't score a three, then in. It wasn't the pasta. So did you do ketchup on your pasta too? I haven't tried that yet. That's gross. Well, the new coach is named Hines. Do you put, do you put ketchup? <laughs> I was going to say, I was actually going to make Real a tomato that, ketchup, Eddie? <laughs> that they should have waited till they had 57 games left to make the coaching change. <laughs> well, Heinz, I mean. Heinz 57. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, you should maybe mix in some Heinz with it too. Do you put ketchup on your eggs? Not anymore. I used to though, all the time growing up. Yeah. So I think that's a Canadian thing. I don't think that's popular here. Oh thing. yeah, like mac and cheese, ketchup, so bacon, I, ketchup, bacon, ketchup. I like bacon and peanut butter. That's good. <laughs> I've never tried that's that. Close. It's excellent. Elvis did it, so you know it's good. Are you Dewey one or Dewey two? I can't. Oh, remember. this is gonna be a this is gonna be a problem. I'm two. Why? So I don't understand that because he does scuba and stuff. He gets to be one. Well, so it all started in Des Moines. Um, Tim Army was our coach. And then he'd be calling who to go and he'd panic and he'd be he'd say, Dewey, Dewey. And we'd be like, oh, who? Like and then he'd be like, it just kind of evolved into Brandon being Dewey one and me being Dewey two. Is so it that was how we called out the lines. Does it bother you? Or are you like do you ever think about yeah, it? Yeah, because like the sequels never you got as like as the original. Four points you need the to be night. the original. You got four points the other night. <laughs> I mean, I think at that point you're like, hey, um, in, in light of recent hey. offensive developments. Four points is like the ace of spades. I just trumped you. Hey. I'm doing one. I'm doing one. <laughs> well, it's, it's come to the point, though, where everyone calls Brandon LD, Little Do, and they call me Big Do. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so you actually kind of, are rising yeah. up. Nice. Yeah, we flipped. We turned the table. So keep numbers out of it. Yeah. I think that's better for everyone. Yeah. All right, so he's LD and you're big do. Yeah. That's that's a strong start. Um, this hey, is – go ahead if you got something. Well, I was just going to ask um, – well, you, we should do Michelob Golden, whatever you wanted to follow well, up. Well, I was on. just curious about that because that's a Minnesota beer. You can't get that anywhere else. Yeah, I think that's why I like it because it's kind of like, like like a Minnesota treat kind of. Yeah. And I go home and I'm telling all my buddies about this, this beer that's so good. And it's just like a – it's like a legend or a myth to them. Like the, Yeah, they've the never legend. seen it. Yeah. 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 It, it's you can't get it anywhere other than Minnesota no. or, or uh, near Minnesota. So I was kind of floored by that. But I like that you came to Minnesota with an open mind, and now you're you're you know you're, you're turning into a Minnesota beer drinker. Yeah. I like that. I wanted to hear um, when you have a 
a change go through? Because we, last week practice was canceled. We were sitting in here. We were going to record. We didn't really know what was going on. Obviously, the coaching change happens. Um, as a player, when something happens like that, is it? What do you go through? Do you kind of have to? Is it sort of like all bets are off? I got to reprove myself all over again, or like what? What does it feel like as a as a player to kind of do that in real time? Um. I honestly, like, I had a lot of mixed emotions. I didn't know how to really feel or, like, go about my day after. Um, you know, there's – it's obviously stressful. Um, you know, you feel kind of sad because two guys lost their job because of the product that, that us players are putting out on the ice. And, you know, per se, it's not exactly the coach's fault or anything. So, um, you know, I think we felt all a little bit responsible for that. Um, and then on the other side of that, too, I just think um, – I thought, you know, I'm going to give myself a clean slate. You know, I don't think really anyone liked their, their first 19, 20 games of the season or whatever it was. And yep. and I just kind of said, okay, I'm just going to try to – I think if we break it down in a 60-game season from here on, you know, I think we can be the best team in the NHL. It's like pre-pesto and then pesto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, but when, when the coaching change happens – and I've been in that spot. I was with the Wild when Mike Yo lost his job, and then John Torchetti comes in. Um, the fourth line a lot of times gets their opportunity because the coach likes that individual, that player, what they bring, and their role. And in some ways, that's the easiest guy to change, and I'm not trying to make you nervous or scared or anything like that. I played in that role. Mm -hmm. So it's it's almost more frightening when there's a coaching change for your bottom six or your five, six D man, because the future is now uncertain. And was there any motivating factor all of a sudden to be like, holy cow. And like, there's no more, not that there was like extreme comfort, but Hey, like we're right back to every single shift, every single play matters all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, um, Dean played us quite a bit. I look around like, uh, as far as like ice times around the league and as far as fourth line goes, I think we play quite a bit. Um, which maybe isn't isn't all that common around the league. But, um, you know, the first morning he came in and, and Heinze spoke to us, um, I really liked his message and, and the way he wanted to play, and I think it kind of suited, you know, my style of play. You know, Brandon can skate too. Um, and then, you know, we've kind of had a, a mixed bag of line mates this year, but, uh, you know, this team is built that anyone can play with anyone. What, so what, what has changed can you I mean can you talk about anything like his his messaging or things that have changed on the ice is there anything that you can pinpoint to say like hey this is this has changed um well firstly I think it's a little bit on the mental side I think it took a lot of pressure off uh, off of some guys you know guys who aren't scoring um you know just even the, the special teams are struggling you know um and then he's just kind of encouraging playing fast and and, you know, playing to the strengths of our team, which is, you know, everyone skates. Um, everyone wants to play hard and work hard for each other, and, and everyone's, like, a, an intelligent player out there too. So, um, you know, maybe it's a, it's a bit more natural for us, and, you know, they're, they're encouraging the D to get up a lot too. What What's it like, the penalty kill? Because you guys, everybody's working so hard. I've been on kills too, where it's just like it felt like everything was going in, and you're like, oh, my goodness. Um, What's it feel like when it finally turns the corner? Like it, it seems like it has the last couple of games where you go out there and confidently and decisively kill some penalties off and you can go over the boards feeling like you did your job. Um, it's huge. It's huge for the team. You know, even last night, I think we didn't have a great start. And then we have that, that big kill in the first flower made some big saves. And I think that kind of got the ball rolling for us. But um, yeah, it is different now. It's, it's kind of at the point where we jump the boards and we're pretty confident we know we're going to get the kill, you know, and, and beforehand that the stretch we're on is it'll, it'll hit two skates and then end up on someone's state back door or something like, right. It was just nothing would work. Right. Let's get back to getting weird a little bit. Uh, so your favorite animal, do you, what, what's your favorite animal? Uh, I think I've said shark. Shark. Yeah. <laughs> shark. Does that cause any problems between the Deweys? Because he's basically a shark hunter. That's no. right. He's <laughs> trying to kill what you yeah. love. What's the deal? Um, you know, like growing up, I had like a, like every little boy, it's like a dinosaur obsession. And then it like, I went from Jurassic Park to watching Jaws. So then I was obsessed with sharks. I like sharks. So you, you're going to give Dewey little Dew. Yeah, a pass, a, yeah. a pass on being a shark hunter. 
I don't know if he's hunting sharks. Um, I think he is. I actually, um, our father's trip last year, we went deep sea fishing. Yeah. yeah. We caught like an eight foot nurse shark. I got it taxidermied. It just got shipped to my parents' house. Really? Yeah. So we got. Oh, like, that's awesome. <laughs> no way. Like an eight foot shark ready to go up in my my man cave. We're gonna need day. a picture of that. Yeah. Um, so if the wild were able to pick individual goal songs, yours would be "Cigarette Daydreams." Well, so no, it wouldn't be. It was the the media day, and they like pressured me. That was. I had that as like one of my top three songs, and I was just like, all right, I'll just put that. But I think um, my goal song would be uh Rocks and you don't have to put on the red. Oh, the police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that'd yeah. be my goal song. <laughs> the police, Roxanne. Yeah. I like that. Did you just knock on wood for your goal song? He's getting the beat. Oh, yeah, the was, beat. Okay. Was, that's his hidden talent. Yeah. He, okay. he can okay. fingernail beat. I can find the beat at any bar in the world. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. Um, it, tell me, I, I, I'm curious because, you know, with the whole LD and BD and like w- tell us about give us a little bit about Duhame. I watch him on TV and he's seems like he's just always saying stuff all the time. Like on the bench, he's just like, like oh yeah, oh yeah, boy. Like if somebody's like Felina was in that fight in Nashville, I just see him just nonstop. Is he just constantly saying stuff? Nonstop. Yeah, like all the time. It's funny when guys come here like through a trade or something. Like the first games are like. What's this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, two years ago, in, in, we were in, at MSG playing the Rangers, and Boldy was dancing on the blue line, like, deked two guys out, and Duhame's on the bench. He's like, sick f***ing mitts. <laughs> and then Bold's turned it over, 2-0 the other way, and they score, and Duhame just plops down on the bench like this. <laughs> <He's defeated. laughs> That's so great. Yeah. No, he looks like, I love, like, an energy guy, too. It's just, it's just fun to just have somebody just constant shenanigans and and going for that so yeah it looked like he's he's the, always got it going so yeah. let's take us take us on the bench a little bit because and let's use the x because you have Kaprizov and zuccarello who like to go all the way the right side of the mm-hmm. bench are they trying to hide from Duhame and all his chatter or <laughs> i i think so i think you know zuki's just been around for for a while and you know that stuff just stuff that he doesn't need to get going he definitely does it. Yeah. So you you score your hat trick. The team was obviously excited. That was kind of a cool shot too because it, was it the third goal that was under review for a kick in? Yeah. And then it, you you were able to be sitting on the bench and you're watching, and then it was a goal and everybody's right there. It's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, I saw that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what? How many text messages and and what did the phone look like when you got out of the, out of the rink that day? I mean, there there had to be a thousand on your phone. Uh. It was probably like fifty to hundred texts. I'd say <laughs> it's a pretty solid day. Yeah. What was the best line? Like, what were people saying to you on the bench? And um, it's just in every you were, you were, anything you touched was going into the back of the net. So, what do you, what do the guys say to you when you're on the bench? Anything you remember being funny or um, about reacting to your your day? Uh, you know, the the thing I found funny was just how surprised everyone was. I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> It just, I was kind of like, come on, guys. Like, everyone's in disbelief, kind of. And I was <laughs> like, oh, my How God. How did this happen? Oh, this is like, unbelievable. Yeah. And you're like, like hey, just hey. so you know, I scored goals my whole life. <laughs> yeah. This I play the only lot, level that I play a lot less I than can't. you. I'm only on the ice for this long. Yeah, know? goals per 60. We're now tied. It's yeah. not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just total disbelief. And you're like, well, come on, guys. I know how to play hockey. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, what was the the one was disallowed on the offsides? Was that what the we well, had two was? challenged? Bruno yeah, I was like I'm not letting do her. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bruno even my was... assists they had challenged for offside. It was a stressful night actually. The most stressful <laughs> point night I've ever had. Most, ex- most stressful four point night he's ever had. Yeah. Six was a six two game. <laughs> uh, uh, so something came of that. Uh, I want to talk about it too because we saw you hand it off last night to Rossi. Mm-hmm. There's what is it, a Viking helmet? I think that's what it was. That was the first I've seen it last night. Oh, so you got it last night, and as the player of the game, the game before, you were the one to pass off yeah. the helmet to so Ross. I, I handed it off to Marco. Yeah, interesting. So that, is that like the new hard hat or whatever it yeah, is? Yeah, I like, think that's our player of the game type thing. We do you have. wear it? I haven't seen him do it yet. Do you put it on your Rossi head? Rossi wore or it last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I crowned Marco. Yeah. And it's got. does it have horns? Yeah. Okay. It's cool. pretty sweet. Who grabbed that? I wonder who picked that up. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I have no idea. I hope it wasn't Little Dew. 
because then he'll start rising up the ranks again. It must be heavy though, because Rossi's like acceptance speech was really short. It's metal. <laughs> it was what? Like, how heavy is it? Is it like a real Viking helmet? I don't know. I don't know if you're raiding a town with it or anything, but no, you're not raiding a town no. with it. Okay. <laughs> but it looks like a real one. Yeah, it looks real. Nice. That's yeah, good. That's you go to a Vikings game and look cool. Probably. I like that. Another fun stat. Another fun uh, big Dewey stat is that he has the longest Iron Man streak on the Minnesota Wild. I think it's approaching somewhere around 100 games. So, um, knock on wood, he's the Iron Man. Getting a beat. the beat of the studio here. Uh, not easy to stay healthy in that role, so congratulations. Thank you. You you changed your number at one point from fifty two to twenty six. What's the what's wh- how come you have the number you have, and what was what was fifty two about? Well, uh, fifty two is just assigned as like my okay. training camp number, yep. and then um, twenty six I wore as a kid. Um, you know, it was just kind of one of those things as a kid you kind of envisioned yourself wearing a number in the NHL, and it was twenty six for me. That's awesome. The, uh, and then when did you, Karts likes to ask this people, and I think it's interesting, especially with where you're from, when did you know you were a player? Like, when did you kind of have your first moment? Um, it sounds like for a lot of your teammates, it was in Nashville the other night, but um, when, uh, when, when was it that you're like, this could be a thing? Um, you know, growing up up north, we were pretty much, we just play against the other communities up north um you know maybe once or twice a year we go down south down near the city for a tournament and you know then you see a bunch of players you never you never played against but these names you heard about forever and you know whenever I'd play against those guys I I felt like I could I'd get the better of them and you know I always felt like there's like a city bias in Manitoba which there definitely is um so yeah being a rural kid I think you kind of had a chip on your shoulder and when you went south you wanted to to be dominant did you uh go home for the summer yeah. Okay. So you go back up to the Paw. Uh, my parents live in Winnipeg, like just outside Winnipeg now. So okay. So I'm you around, go to Winnipeg. Yeah, I'm around Winnipeg in the summer. I saw in your uh, Becoming Wild that you like hiked to some amazing lake and went in there. Is that that was that in the Paw? Yeah, that's in the Paw. That what is that place called? Um, so it's Clearwater Lake. It's a, it's like a glacial lake. That's amazing. It's freezing cold, but it's crystal clear. It's. And you go in there like when you're up there? Do you is that a, like you go in there in the morning and get refreshed, or is that like do it one time? Uh. So, I mean, now when I go up to the pond in the summer, I'll be there probably like three, four days because um, it is like six-hour drive, so it's not like I'm doing that trip very often. But, yeah, it'll be usually um, wake up, hungover, and, and, you know, go jump in the glacial lake. And that just erases the hangover. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like. Mm-hmm. I could use a, that lake near me. That would be good. What so, else you got, Karts? No, I, I'm looking for a Shaw update. The uh, Where's Mason Shaw? We haven't seen him around. I think he's in Iowa. Like, you keep in contact with him? He's yeah, big. I call him every few days. Um, I think right now I think he's he's back skating with the team, so that's good news. Um, I think he's he's here this weekend to see the doctors again and get an update from there. Are you a caller or a texter? Like, right out of the blue, would you – you calling Mason Shaw? Or are you texting him like, "Hey, I'm gonna call you in a little bit." Like, which one? No, we just call each other. You're just a caller. Yeah, we'll just play phone tag and then we'll line up at, at some point in the day. Man, I like that. Yeah. Old that's, school. That's Old how school. I am too. Yeah. Not a texter. I'll just call you. It's mm-hmm. just easier for me. Yeah, it's way easier. Yeah, it's the best. Um, well, cool. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you got anything else, Kinger? No, I just want to know what's what's Shaw like on the phone. He's just got to be a beauty. He's just himself, yeah. Yeah, he's he's. <laughs> I don't, we need him back. He's shot. got he's got a he's what a journey he's been on back and forth with all the injuries. But yeah, we'd love to. If you're listening, Mister Shaw, keep battling because we miss you. Yeah, I, I'm good, man. Thank well, you for yeah, so, so you got a big road trip coming up. Here. Yeah, good luck on the road trip. Um, hopefully, the pesto sits well and continues to uh, keep you. Uh, on the score sheet, but I appreciate the time, and it was fun having you. This keep, was fun. Keep rolling, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Peace. Sneaky, no, sneaky sense of humor. Yeah, he's funny. It, but in a dry way, um, and, uh, yeah, he's 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 kind of goofy. Like, it's it's in there. you got to find it a little bit, but it's in there. I like him. Next time we interview, maybe we have to have, like, three Mick Olden lights before the interview. But because you can tell that he's got some humor, but he didn't know if it, if yeah. if we were cool enough to for him to be able to let him go. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> and he he's having. A, I I love some of his. So, there's a lot of uh, 
unintentional humor there too. Like what was most surprising when you got the three goals and the four points and it's just like a five second pause. And then I think just how su- surprised everyone was. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he's like looking at his ice time, you know, how much he plays going, Hey, you know, I could probably do this more often, but no, he was great. I, uh, you know, tying back to the start of the pod, uh, there's still work to do here, right? We only got 20 points. Um, the bottom wild card is 25. Um, we do have a game in hand, but they're saying by they, I, I don't know if this is just Russo or what, but like this, uh, the magic number is 85 in the West. I have no idea if that's even true, but it seems like this year you can maybe sneak into the Western side of the playoffs with 85 points. So, man, we got a stretch here. Calgary, Canucks are red hot, and we got Oilers back to back, and then Seattle. All these, we'll be staying up late. You're not going on the trip, so get to tuck in with your TV tray 9 p.m. and watch some of these games. It's going to be a big trip for sure, and it's not easy. I think it, there's work to do. Well, and especially when you factor in the travel, the fact that it feels like the Wild have been on the road for the whole season, a month straight. And now this one comes at um, kind of at a critical point. They are going out to Calgary, then over to Vancouver, then back to Edmonton, then back to Seattle, and then coming home finally. So the travel doesn't make a lot of sense. It's They're kind of zigzagging back and forth. Uh, it'll be tough. There'll be a lot of air miles between games too. Uh, but Maybe they're loading up those air miles at the end of the year trying to get status. Yeah, maybe. That could be why. <laughs> trying to get diamond. But it will be it will be a late night, Thursday night. We should probably tee this up. It's my understanding that you're going to make your Bally debut. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I get to come out to the TV. John's going to be on Bally. It's a good thing you reminded me of that, actually, because <laughs> I don't know that I have that written down anywhere. So, yeah, what do I get? What do I do? I come, like, am I with you on the studio or something? Yeah. Okay. Do we- I have to wear a suit? Yeah. No, I don't know what I wear. Okay, that'll be interesting. Suit and tie, man. Watch the you watch the me? ratings. Are you a pro or are you a Joe? The ratings we'll are going to plummet. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to wear. Yeah. Um, well, I can't shave then. That, that I know that. Well, I tell you what, if uh, if you were going to eventually shave that though, you'd probably want some soft water. Um, make sure that the face is, stays nice and hydrated, and I would that the shaving cream would. Would foam up nicely. I would work with uh, Aquarius. Yeah, Aquarius Home Services. So if your water is a problem at all, uh, you're going to want to look these guys up there. I've got the Kinetico K5 system uh, at home on tap. That's filtered reverse osmosis water. Crisp, clean, love it. Also have the water softener downstairs. Um, that allows me to use very little shampoo to get the hair shiny. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't complain. Love my water system. So if you have water trouble at all, um, Aquarius Home Services should be your next call. Hey, Kurtz, you want it all in one convenient place? We get it, and we've got it, too. With Cub Pickup and Delivery, pickup is always free. Or choose delivery with no hidden fees ever. Easier to shop, easier to save. Cub Pickup and Delivery. All perked up. My cub, my way. We're having a good time. Really a good time. Talking about good times. Good, good time. It's all about joy. A real good time. And having a good, good time. Make your last-minute gift-giving easy with the Wild Winter Bundle. Buy two or more tickets to select games and receive a Wild Buffalo plaid blanket. Buy now and bundle up at wild.com slash WWB. Well, I guess, what would success look like for you here? I mean, I I think it was really fun this last week. I actually went to the game on Tuesday night. I like to occasionally step in when I think the team needs me. I'm 3-0, by the way. Opening night, New York Rangers victory. And then the St. Louis victory. So I'm 3-0. and I can be called on in desperate situations, like the bat signal. I, I went to... So I, you're basically... A, you could be a slump buster. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't really like exactly how that's going to play, but I see what you mean. Um, yes. And I... Uh, but I... What, what's... But I think most people said, hey, these were winnable games here with... And that's probably part of the reason why the coaching change occurred when it did. I think the, the way the schedule laid out, you want to get off 
um, on the right foot. Coaching change, got to win these games, and it kind of forced the hand a little bit. They go to win these three games. It's great for them. Um, everybody's feeling good about it now. It's the tough trip out west, and things are going in the right direction. Uh, let's. Since- what success look like on this trip with four games? Four games in a week, a back-to-back mixed in there. Well, that's the challenging part because I think – you still have to maintain high expectation. You know, the Wild didn't get off to a great start, but you don't want to start settling for, well, two, you know, two of four uh, would be pretty good on this road trip. You know, I think that they should they should strive for six points. You've got Vancouver, who's played well. Seattle has not played well. Edmonton has struggled, and Calgary's, who, who really knows what Calgary is? It seems like they can never really find themselves. They're, they're hot and cold. You don't know what you're going to get. But um, I think the toughest matchup is going to be the Vancouver game. And Yeah, they're red hot. Yeah, the other three are gettable, and you almost should have the expectation that you're the better club and that, that you should win them. So I think six points is a good trip. Anything above that's a great trip, and anything below that's kind of like, ah, oh, we left some points on the table. Yeah, you need more than four points you can't settle for the classic road trip yeah. b500 on the road because we're in a hole and they're in the spot now where it was like it, it should be like the last couple years where you win two three maybe you drop one but you don't drop two in a row and that's what the wild did last year and the year prior uh, they were able to not like they're able to cauterize their cuts a little bit you know and and win games so they've got to get back to that they can do that then i think they'll be in a comfortable spot real soon the west is wide open i don't know if 85 is the right number but sub 90 points right now if the teams are playing the way that they're playing uh would get you into a wild card spot well it's not the west it's the wild west wild west yeah and that's that's been that's been a good thing i want to check in real quick with the group chat how's the group chat been um, how's our buddy Rat been after the ups and downs of the season? I've only seen Rat at hockey. I haven't talked to him about the Wild. Um, there's Are you? there's a funny backlash going on in the group text. Um, so the guys that jumped to the Timberwolves now are trying to engage with the Wild conversation, and it's just like people are like, "Hey, I don't you got to? Aren't they playing the Nuggets? Like they basically have a, they've lost their chip." Now that they jump to go NBA, and so they uh, they're being punished. I think is the only way to say it. Yes. Okay. That that makes sense. Um, all right. Well, anything else, man? I mean, it's, how's U ten A? U ten A is good. We had a good game. It's a big tournament this weekend. We go out of town, the Big Ole, in Alexandria. So I guess we'll see what what we're made of. Yeah, that's good. You got you think you think you can get a trophy? I'm not sure. If they play well, they should be able to earn themselves a trophy. But well, if you do, you would, you, would you bring? I don't it know in the here? competition there. I don't know like what teams are. Bring it in here next week if you get one. I'd like to see it. Um, yeah, thank our thanks to our guest Connor Dewar. He's switched to Pesto, and I think everything's changed. And uh, yeah, let's keep it the Wild West. Stay positive. Break the mold. We're here till it's here.